YouTube and Podcast Nation. Welcome to the From Setbacks to Success YouTube channel and podcast. I'm your host, Quincy Benton. And guess what? I'm a felon. Not only have I served time in federal prison, but I've been divorced, I've declared a bankruptcy, I've experienced a house fire. In short, I've experienced some major setbacks in my life. Some of you too watching right now have experienced or may be currently experiencing some setbacks in your life as well. However, I want you to know that there is hope and there's a way to get through. Through the content that you'll find on this channel, the interviews that we'll have and the episodes, you'll find tips and success strategies that will help you get back in the game and succeed. If this sounds like content you would be interested in, please smash the like button and press the subscribe button. We would love to have you as a part of our community. So with that being said, let's get right into it today and jump into our, uh, today's topic. And it's going to be my four keys for how to deal with the trauma after you have been incarcerated or locked up. With uh, key strategy number one is make amends with those that you may have done wrong. Now, due to our incarceration and, and everybody's situation is unique and different, but there probably were factors or could have been uh, factors that uh, as a result of your arrest uh, where uh, people in a sense, maybe your family members or loved ones uh, have uh, felt in some sense abandoned, particularly when it comes to children uh, that you may have uh, had. Uh, although again, you know, we as the people who serve time uh, feel like in a lot of senses that we paid the ultimate price uh, we were the ones that were locked up and, 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 and were pretty much, as I call it, you know, buried alive. Uh, however, uh, for uh, people, the other people, uh, again, children and, and, and loved ones and uh, girlfriends, spouses, just again, every situation is unique. Um, they have, may have been uh, damaged and, and, and felt uh, that they were done wrong in some type of way as well. So I think that is very uh, critical uh, for your ongoing success. Again, this is, this is really just based upon my opinions and I hope it is well received uh, by our community uh, as a, a, a strategy, but you know, uh, you know, clean up what you messed up in a sense, or, or at least you know, give it your best effort to do so. And, and a lot of times that just starts with, you know, going out and telling people very simply, you know, I'm sorry. Um, you know, apologizing to those people directly, having those type of conversations uh, and, and, and it being, you know, coming from a, a very genuine place. Number two uh, in this process is going to be, again, seek professional counseling. Had an episode that I did uh, here recently, uh, recorded with a uh, licensed therapist here in Oklahoma City. Her name is Dr. Mauricia Palmer. I'll put a link uh, to that video here. Uh, at the interview that we did. And with, when I, I talked with Dr. Palmer and her, at her, and she has a clinic here called Spring Eternal Clinic, uh, we discussed uh, just different issues related to trauma that, that people go through. And uh, truly incarceration is a traumatic event. Um, I know for me personally, uh, there were things that I've had to deal with. Um, uh, a lot of the uh, guilt and shame uh, in a lot of ways, uh, the, um, in some cases, just, um, just uh, feeling that, you know, I, uh, you know, failed myself and failed the people who really cared about me. And so, uh, you know, those were a, a lot of the, you know, emotions for whatever reason, reason that came up, you know, after um, being incarcerated, after my release. And, you know, it was just odd in the sense to have those feelings because, you know, at that point, you know, what you would think, like, what, what, what do I have to be not happy about? You know, I'm free, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out here back in society, you know, eating the kind of foods that I like to eat. I, you know, was doing pretty well in, in, in certain aspects. And so, you know, there was no reason that you would think that someone should feel uh, bad about that. But um, I did. And I know that some of you watching right now or listening right now, you are probably maybe going through some similar things where you're not feeling like you, you're you unhappy on some level uh, when you should be. And so, uh, you know, those are things that you can try to deal with on your own. Um, 
you know, having conversations with people, um, friends, family, loved ones can help. Um, um, but uh, that should not be the only strategy that you should use. Number three is keep your faith. Keep your faith. Um, faith for a lot of men and, you know, we're all different and women uh, in terms of our journey, but uh, faith uh, for uh, many of us who were, have been stripped of everything, you know, stripped of all our material possessions, stripped of all our outside relationships, um, you know, just stripped down in a lot of very uh, significant ways, you know, while we were incarcerated. Um, for some of us, many of us, you know, our faith was one of the things, if not the major thing, that, you know, kind of kept us uh, together and not wanting to, to give up and, and, and not wanting to do something drastic like, uh, you know, commit suicide or, or just, you know, just, just completely give up. And so when we, when we talk about faith and, uh, you know, there's, you know, different types of, of, of religious faiths, um, the, you know, in that practice it is what is going to, is the fuel that you will need uh, to, you know, deal with and to move beyond and work through the challenges that you will inevitably face. Number four and the last one is maintain the proper perspective. Maintain your proper perspective. And I say this one because it's very easy to get distracted out here to think that somehow you have are uh, not adequate, uh, that you are not sufficient, that uh, you have uh, lost out completely and you are, 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 are way and tremendously behind, you know, the rest of the world and the rest of society. And, and, and that per perspective uh, or, uh, or that um, uh, false sense of uh, reality in some cases uh, can again become a be a distraction. Uh, it can demotivate you. It can, you know, lead you to places uh, where you, uh, you know, have uh, certain levels of anxiety or depression. And so, uh, you know, those things are, are, are what the world attempts to feed us as far as what the uh, definition, quote unquote, of success. And and as men and women, you know, we're all, you know. Um, possibly susceptible to, to, to having these feelings and emotions, uh, particularly again, when we see, you know, so many people doing so many things on so many, you know, great and big and huge levels uh, in our world. But uh, you don't have to measure yourself uh, by other people's definitions of success. The only definition of success that you have to measure yourself by is your definition of success. So at this point, Here's another episode. This is how we drop on from setbacks to success uh, on our channel. Uh, again, I would love to hear your comments and feedback about today's episode. So please drop those in the, the description down below. Again, don't let your setback stop you from your success. I look forward to catching up with you the next time. Peace.